hallelujah. And I would say good morning to you. Good morning to all of our visitors. And we welcome you to Grace House Victory Center. I'm Cynthia Jackson, the pastor and overseer. And we are a family of churches that God is using to advance his will in the kingdom, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. And we're so happy to have you with us this morning. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. And we thank you for sharing a portion of your day with us. We do appreciate you and your time. In order to minimize service disruptions, please mute your phone until we ask otherwise. And I just thank you in advance for helping us to deliver a quality experience to everyone. Now the vision of Grace House Victory Center is centered on bringing wholeness to believers in Christ and bringing redemption and recovery to those who do not know Christ. We seek to teach others how to live victoriously in everyday life. Our mission is to demonstrate the love of Christ by letting our light shine bright, to overpower darkness in our neighborhood, in our community and the world. And we just want you to know that there is a service on tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central, and it's on the same Zoom meeting um, details, same Zoom meeting, the same uh, details that you use to log in. It's a night of fire. It's a virtual praise service. And since we're having this service, we won't have midweek Bible study on this Wednesday. We've begun uploading our sermons and we ask you to share. We're still in our challenge that if you get 25 uh, subscribers or more per week, Every week we will award a gift to those who do it. And our communion service, the next communion service will be held the first Sunday in January, 2021. We ask that you get your bread and drink your wine and be prepared to celebrate with us on first Sunday, January, 2021, that we break bread, have communion together. Grace House Victory Center wishes you a blessed and prosperous Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, for Christmas is this coming Friday, and we pray that you and your families are happy, safe, and blessed. We also thank you for supporting this work through online giving. We currently accept contributions by PayPal. You can log in and pay to our email address, which is info at gracehousevictorycenter.org. And I want to pray over and bless your tithe and offering. Please bow your head and agree with me in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through Christ you have given the gift of abundant life, eternal life. You're a good Father who gives us good gifts and everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you with thanksgiving, may your favor and blessings be extended towards us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. Multiply it back to each giver without measure. Let wealth and riches be in the house of every giver and those that desire or have a heart to give, according to Psalms 112 and 3. So as we bring tithes and offerings into your house, let the windows of heaven be opened over our lives Rebuke the devourer for our sakes, according to Malachi 3, 10 through 11. And according to Psalms 118, 25, we say, save now. I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Provide help and resources to those struck by tragedy, loss, sickness, trouble, or death. Blessing and glory, honor and power be unto you, our God, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Our God is awesome. And we trust him this morning. We trust him with our life and with the lives of our loved ones. So uh, the sermon this morning is entitled, Wash Your House. And I'm going to read this morning and I'm going to read very fast because I have a, an entire chapter of Joshua 7 to read. We're going to cover the entire story because it is crucial uh, that you understand the background and hear the story, that even if I don't get into every detail of the sermon, you will know the story for yourself. 
So I'm going to begin reading um, Joshua chapter seven in its entirety. Thank you, Lord. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. I'm reading for King, from King James. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the angel, and excuse me, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of I smote them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what shall thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou this upon, thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. And therefore the children of Israel could not stand before the enemy, but turned their backs before their enemy, because they were accursed. Neither shall I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves again tomorrow, against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by household, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, and he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken, and, the, and he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man, and Zabdi was taken, and he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now, what hast thou done? Hide it not from me. I'm on the 20th verse now. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent. 
and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and asses and his sheep and his tents and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones. And they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. The text, this text is the story of how Israel was given permission by God to go to war against the enemy. But Israel experienced a huge defeat. They had just experienced a great victory. Just come from Jericho, excuse me this morning. They had just come from Jericho, destroying Jericho. And yet now they've experienced a great defeat. Israel had God's permission to fight, but the enemy won the battle. When they inquired with God as to why, he said sin was in the camp. They found that Achan took spoil that should have been destroyed. God told them to destroy everything out of it, Jericho, and take nothing for themselves. So as believers, I just want you to know that we must stop thinking that we don't, won't have trouble just because we are saved and in Christ. That's what I want you to know, um, first of all. The word tells us in 2 Timothy 3 and 1 that in the last days, perilous times would come. And I'm still talking about our sermon topic, which is wash your house. Our sermon topic is wash your house. Now we're coming through where there was a problem with Israel and they had to repent, get it right, clean up before things would turn around. In other words, they had to go through a washing. Now we know that it says in the last days, perilous times will come. And God also told us in Matthew 3 and 11 that he would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. That means that the devourer must come in order for God to be able to rebuke him. And then and Isaiah 54, 17 says that, the, um, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That doesn't mean the weapon wouldn't come. It just means it's not going to prosper. It's not going to be successful against us. How? Why? Because no matter what happens, God works it for our good. Even in death, it works for our good. We expect and desire to live long lives. But what we actually, when if we actually go to sleep, we still win. This is true because we, we then are present with the Lord. Jesus died so that the grave for the saints has no victory. Trouble comes. As long as we live in this world, there will be challenges. But some trouble can be prevented. And sometimes others cause unwelcome trouble to visit us. The Bible tells me that the curse doesn't come without a cause. Achan didn't have to sin. That trouble could have been avoided. Just like for Israel, our nation is experiencing unexpected trouble. It has left many of us disappointed. The point, disappointment comes. We have to search and clean our hearts. We have to clean our spiritual houses. We have to clean our churches and clean our public and civic institutions. If we do, and if we, uh, we will then re uh, turn our disappointment into victory. Oh yes, it can be done. 2020 has been disappointing. We have lost many loved ones. We continue to get word of many great people have died. Many magnificent saints have died. Just got word that Dr. Bishop Iona Lott 
has died. Some of us have lost jobs and some experienced unjust treatment and violence. As much as we prayed, some things may not have resulted in the way that we wanted, but we must keep the faith. You may be hurting, but I dare you to flip the script, uh, flip the script on sorrow, flip the script on the pain and sadness, flip the script on depression and disappointment. How do you do it? Wash your houses. That is the answer. Wash your house. In our natural house, when someone gets sick, we grab the Lysol and start praying. We start deep cleaning. We wash windows and we wash the doors. We mop and we wipe down everything. We wash the seat sheets. We wash the curtains and we wash every doorknob in the house. And in Christ, we go and get our oil. We plead the blood and we walk the house in prayer. We know that what God has blessed, no man can curse. But in today's scripture, God's anointed, the children of Israel are defeated, have been defeated. The curse didn't come without a cause. Someone opened the door and gave permission for the curse to come in. The children of Israel searched the camp. They found the problem and cleaned the house. They washed with confession and repentance. They held the violator responsible. And after they cleansed, then you can find that in the eighth chapter of the same book of Joshua, that they went back into battle with that same city of I. And this time God gave the victory. They washed their house. They repented and got it right. And in the 12th verse of today's text, God had refused to let his presence be with Israel. He told them that he would not be with them until they got it right. They had to find a problem and fix it. And as we look over 2020, we are on the brink and we're on the brink of 2021. We need to do the same thing. And in the words of John the Baptist, as he said in Mark 3 and 2, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's all we have to do to change from one status to another. Just repent. That's how we wash in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, Moses said, and I'm reading still in the King James verse, I'm still calling it out. I call heaven and earth to record you this day that I have set before your life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Be careful who and what is in our camp. That's the warning this morning. We got to be careful who is in our camp and what is in our camp, because what individuals do doesn't just impact them. It impacts, it impacts those, all of us around them. The Bible tells us that in Joshua 22 and 20, it says, did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? And wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. It wasn't just him that died, but all those around him died. And even those that went to a battle with them, some of them died. Achan hid the evil thing, thinking that no one would know. And that's what we do at times. But we have to realize that God sees and God knows. He knows when sin is in the camp. Sin is in our nation and sin is among our leaders, even in the church. And sin is in our homes. Revelation 21 and 8 says, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderous and homongous and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone hallelujah 
But if we don't want that experience, we must wash our houses. We need to get ourselves in order. But while you're cleaning, give God praise. When my mother cleaned and worked around the house, she would be humming. She would hum. She would sing praises and she sang hymns and gave God glory. You know why? Because praise is comely for the upright. That's how we get God's attention. Because he tells us in his word, enter into my gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. When praises go up, blessings come down. Praise confounds the enemy. Praise causes the enemy to implode. After Israel cleaned house, and dealt with Achan, they went to battle again, and God gave them the victory. And that's what we need in our homes. That's what we need in our neighborhoods and in our cities <laughs> and in our nation, America, as we clean house and operate with integrity. God will defeat our enemies. He will fall the enemy's plans. He will smile on us. He will restore us. There is hope. America has an Achan, but when Achan is gone, the plague will cease. It will get better. Clap your hands, O Zion, and give glory to our God. Take your hands off a of mute this morning and clap your hands on Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands on Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. We'll do our altar call. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 